Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com, how to make a Celtic cleaver with full blade and spine etching. Now this cleaver was actually made out of a water jet cut blank. It's 1095 high carbon steel, 3 16 thick, cherry wood scales. And actually as far as knife making goes, it's a very easy build. So we're going to start with uh, water, uh, water jet cut blanks. These uh, blanks are available on DIYEasyCrafts.com. And these are all 3 16 thick uh, 1095 high carbon steel. Very easy to work with and you can get some, some real nice results with them. I started the process by mounting the blank uh, onto a bevel jig. And actually for this particular project you probably don't even need the jig. Um, you know, because it's a cleaver and this particular design, I really don't want the uh, bevel lines to be distinct or to show. I'm really just using this jig um, as a way of uniformly grinding both sides of the blade uh, close to the center mark. So anyway, I'm, I'm using a, a 2x72 uh, belt sander, uh, 80 grit paper and I've marked the center of that blade, I just basically um, marked the edge of the blade with a marker and then scraped uh, the center. And then I'm just watching that uh, from the top of the blade on each side. And I'll just keep going back and forth, making passes. Um, I've set the angle on this bevel jig with that bolt. It's basically just an, a piece of angle iron um, with a drill and tapped hole on one side that I can adjust the bevel or the angle of the bevel. And you don't want to bring it in until it's completely sharp. Um, this has to go through the heat treating process and, and you don't want the material to be too thin for that. I'm just doing the rough uh, grinding now and then after I'm done with these bevel grindings I'm going to actually go back to a uh, oscillating sander and just smooth everything out so that there, there are no uh, bevel lines showing. And the 2x72 grinder makes, makes quick work out of this. If you don't have uh, a sander, belt sander, uh, you could probably do this whole knife with a angle grinder. using one of those flap sanding wheels and just you know go to a from a coarse to a uh, to a fine grit all right so the, the bevel is done on the one side I flipped it over finished grinding uh, the bevel on the other side of the blade You notice I have a bucket of water right next to the belt sander, so every pass or two I'm dipping the blade into the water just to, just to cool it down. And now I'm just using an oscillating sander. I started with an 80 grit um, and I did polish it also with a 220. Uh, the plan here is to do the blade etching prior to heat treating. Uh, I, find, I find that this gives it a really uh, distinct etching, makes the um, background of the etching really stand out, nice dark, um, nice dark background. But you do want to polish that knife down to about a 220 before you start the etching. Now I use a car battery charger to do uh, my etching. Um, I made up some self-adhesive vinyl stickers in the Celtic design that I wanted. And I printed these out with a craft vinyl uh, cutter. And then I transferred these onto a clear transfer film that then allows me to kind of accurately place that vinyl sticker uh, in position on the face of the blade. Once the vinyl is in position, I'll then peel away that transfer film. 
And the whole concept here with this electro, electro etching is that anything that's covered with the vinyl is going to stay shiny and anything that's exposed is going to get etched. For this particular design, I wanted the etching to be the positive. I wanted the etching uh, or that design to be shiny on a dark background. This is a, a finished etching on one side, and then I'll show you exactly how we're going to achieve, achieve that. So anyway, because I want the background to be etched or dark, I'm going to uh, border the whole area that I want etched with vinyl. And I just cut some straight strips and, and you know, place them accurately um, along all edges of the knife. I did prep uh, the blade material just with an alcohol wipe prior uh, to placing these vinyl stickers on. You, you don't want um, any of that vinyl to lift during the etching process. Any water gets under that vinyl, you're going to get areas etched that you don't want etched. That's the car battery charger. It's set at, it's 12 volt charger and I'm only using it at two amps. I've got the positive clipped on to the blade and I've got the negative, a wadded up piece of gauze um, clamped into the negative that I dip into a salt water solution. And actually I use warm salt water. It just seems to work a little bit better. And then what I do is I, sl I slowly move that gauze uh, overlapping the areas until the entire blade gets etched and I hold it in position for about you know 15 or 20 seconds in one spot and then I move it down along the blade. It is a slow process. Um, I, n I never felt comfortable holding it longer than about 20 seconds in one spot because it does build up a little bit of heat and I'm always fearful that that uh, vinyl is going to break down and allow moisture underneath it. I just don't want that vinyl uh, to lose any of its um, stickiness or, or adhesion to the steel. And there are a lot of different ways of etching. Uh, you know, some people submerge the whole blade uh, in, in an electrolyte solution. Other people use uh, ferric, you know, acid, etc. Um, I'm not saying one method is better than the other. This is just the method that I used on this particular knife, and this is the, the method that I'm most comfortable with. Um, I also find that even though this is this takes a little while, um, I have complete control over the depth of the etching. Um, for this particular blade, I wanted a deep etching, so that I actually went back and forth over this entire blade, um, etching every single square inch. Probably each area was probably etched for a full minute to a minute and a half. And you can, you can see the, that the moisture actually bubbles up, a little bit of heat there, a little bit of steam. You don't want too much moisture on that gauze. You just don't want any ex additional water having the ability to flow uh, you know, underneath any of that vinyl. You really want to control it as much as possible. It just has to be damp. Get that electricity uh, flowing through it. And this is a fairly big blade, so this, this one did take quite a little bit of time to etch. So after the etching is done, I'm going to turn off the battery charger before I do anything else. And then I'm just going to clean off the face of the blade just a little bit. I, what I'm really doing is just confirming uh, that the etching is deep enough, that I'm satisfied with the depth of the etching. And you can just take your, your fingernail and run it along uh, that etched area. Um, if you're not completely satisfied, you can lift a little bit of the vinyl just to see uh, how deep the etching actually is. And once you're, you've confirmed that the etching is deep enough, then you can start to peel that vinyl uh, decal off of the blade. And this is going to expose the shiny areas. I just use a little uh, tweezer to remove most of the vinyl, just a little bit easier. Now don't forget this blade has not uh, been heat treated yet. So I find it's a little bit easier, a little bit faster uh, to achieve a deep etching 
on a uh, on a soft blade before it gets hardened. But you can do it either way. You can you can do the etching after the hardening. So I'm just going to peel away the border, the vinyl that was going to border the blade or the etched area of the blade. Now, after the etching, you do have to polish it a little bit. I just use a, a number 500 grit uh, emery cloth just to give it a quick polish. And you're going to have to polish it again after heat treating. And after that, um, I temper the blade. I put it in an oven, 375, for three hours, and then let it cool overnight in the oven without opening the door. And I polished it again after the tempering. So it gets polished a few times during this process. But it's a very quick polishing. It's just a, a quick rub with the 500 with the emery paper. Um, I'm not very sophisticated with my heat treating. I, I brought it over to my friend Jason's shop uh, and with a set of torches, he heated it up until it was cherry red, non-magnetic, uh, and then quenched it in oil. We only heat treated the actual blade of the cleaver. Uh, we really wanted the spine um, to have a little bit of flexibility to it and not to be brittle. After uh, the heat treating and polishing and tempering and polishing, um, I then added uh, cherry wood scales, just standard knife scales. Uh, they're, they're attached with two quarter inch brass pins and a two part epoxy. Uh, you know, basically just, you know, just inserting the pins, everything's lubed up with the uh, epoxy, and then everything gets clamped uh, tightly together and let's set. Uh, I do it overnight. Never, never. I, I never seem to make it to a full 24 hours, but I do. I do clamp it into the vise and clamps overnight. Now, the one thing I didn't do, which I would highly recommend, is you really should uh, cover the compl the blade with painter's tape so that you don't get uh, any of that epoxy onto the etching. It just becomes a pain in the neck to clean it off. And then. You know, finishing off this handle is just like any other knife, however, however you want to do it. I do the rough um, forming on the belt sander. You know, I grind down the pins and, and do the rough shaping on the belt sander. But then I, I also use an oscillating sander. I use a Dremel grinder with a little uh, drum sanding wheel in it uh, to get into the uh, inside curves. You can sand by hand, you know, any way you would normally finish a handle. Now, on this particular knife, I also wanted to add a design onto uh, the spine. So I wanted to polish that uh, handle and the spine down to a 220. So I started at 80, and then I went to a 220 grid. And then I'm going to etch the spine uh, after the handles have been mounted. Uh, I did that on purpose because if you do it the other way, uh, any grinding or any mishap during the... Uh, during the um, finishing of the scales is going to mar the surface of that etched spine. Uh, so basically what I did is I finished the scales or the handles and then I'm going to apply my vinyl sticker to the spine uh, and cover the surrounding areas and then I'll do the etching. Uh, before I got there I did this added a little bit of detail onto the handle with a Dremel grinder and a very small round bit, just really adding a little texture and a little bit of a design, a little dimpling. <clears throat> Alright, so here, here's the blade again, back for the etching. I'm going to etch the spine. I've got my, um, my vinyl, self-adhesive vinyl. Um, and this one is cut out in the, in the design of a rope. And then I'm going to use the exact same process. I'm going to you know, move that negative uh, lead on the car battery charger uh, from position to position 15 seconds at a time. Again, I want to achieve that same uh, deep etching. And this one goes much faster because it's a, it's a smaller area.
I peel away all the vinyl. Polish it up with that 500 grit emery paper. And the only thing additional I did was I added a little uh, oil onto the wood. I used a butcher's block oil just to preserve that those wood scales a little bit. And that's basically it. A finished uh, Celtic cleaver with full blade as well as spine etching and cherry wood scales. Couple images of the finished product. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. By all means, check us out on the web, DIYEasyCrafts.com, and check out our other knife-making videos. Thank you.